Now we're going to take a look at creating an estimate of the concrete walls. In this case the walls were modeled using the profile builder tool. So the walls are actually profile members. Now the area of the walls is calculated slightly different for profile members. Uh, for profile members the area is calculated from the length of the profile member. So if you've got a profile member that's extruded along multiple lines like this wall, the area is going to be calculated from the length of the wall multiplied by the height of the wall. And also an important thing to note is where was the placement point? Uh, where, where did you put the placement point when you created the, the object? So in this case the placement point was, was modeled at the center bottom of the wall. So that's going to slightly affect our area calculation for the wall. The total exterior area of the walls is 200 square feet, not including the opening for the window. If we select the wall, we can see the quantifier has calculated that as 202.667 square feet. Again, that is based on the length of the wall multiplied by the height of the wall, not including any openings. If you want your area calculation to also account for openings, a better way to model the walls would be to use uh, rectangular blocks, and each section of the wall would be a separate rectangular block. So let's look at the cost data that's assigned to the walls. The walls are currently assigned to the concrete wall layer. So let's open that up. Concrete walls. It's very similar to what we saw for the slab in part one. Again, the concrete material is reported in terms of cubic yard. The rebar is just factored in to get the, the total weight of the rebar. The labor is also reported in terms of square footage, as was the slab. But this time we're looking at the wall area, not the plan area. Now when we're looking at the forms material for the walls, what, what I've done here is I've taken the area, which is the input and in square footage, and used a factor of two to come up with the total square footage of formwork for the walls. So when we look at the waterproofing around the walls, uh, there's a couple different ways to do it, but the way I chose to do it in this case is I, I painted a face directly on the wall object and I painted it with a damp proofing or waterproofing material and I've assigned cost data to that material. So let's take a look at it. Clicking on the material cost data, we can see that uh, the input is always gonna be in terms of surface area whenever you're assigning cost data for a material. So in this case, I've assigned a cost of $1.50 per square foot and the waste factor and tax, also including another line item for the labor. So what you'll see is when we take a look at the cost inspector for the wall, it's also going to, going to include the material cost as well, or any cost data that's assigned to materials that are on that object. So here we can see in the cost inspector we have all of the lines that were included for the layer data, but we also have lines for the, any materials that were painted that also include cost data. And those costs are included in the total. Let's take a look at some of the other layer cost data in the model. Spread footings, uh, we've got one spread footing here in the model and that is really set up the same way as, as the walls and the slab. Uh, the only difference is really for form work, I used a factor here to convert the length of the footing, which is square, to a square footage of form work. For strip footings, basically the same idea. Uh, the only main difference, again, is for forms, I've used a different factor con to convert the linear footage of the strip footing to square footage of form work. So that's going to depend, again, on, on your thickness or on your standard thickness of your footings. For the drain tile, uh, that's quantified in terms of linear footage. The gravel base, 
is in terms of cubic yards. Again, anything in volume needs to be modeled as a solid, so the volume will be correctly calculated. Otherwise, it will be a, an estimate. And for the isolation joint material here, we've just done it in terms of a unit cost per linear foot. So what we can do now is we can do a complete report for the entire system. So if I don't select anything, it'll just do a report of all entities, all visible objects in your model. So we'll do a cost detail report. And that is our concrete foundation takeoff and cost estimate. Thanks for watching.